welcome to Community Talk. My name is Dimple Sandhu Johnson. I'm the new volunteer services person at Leonardo's Children's Museum. And here with me is Louis Eggleston, who is the marketing person at Leonardo's Museum. So, Louis, what is new <laughs> at Leonardo's? Well, we have a brand new exhibit that just opened up within the past week. And it's through our Oklahoma Museum Network uh, partnership. And uh, we said goodbye to the Red Dirt Dinos, which were a big favorite at Leonardo's. Uh, we miss Mama Acro a lot. But um, this new exhibit is all about um, some fun, cool characters that are building different projects around the house. Hmm. And so you walk, you enter through the exhibit and um, you're greeted with uh, who they are and what focus area that they all want to work with you with. And um, you put on your yellow hard hat and then you, you can walk through the exhibit. You can start with the, the plumbing area. So kids are um, connecting the, um, uh, the plumbing uh, tubes and oh, with the sink and the toilet and everything else on the wall. And then uh, to make sure that they're all flowing right, they, the kids can run a ball throughout the entire uh, tubes, oh, which very is a cool. lot of fun. And then connected with that is uh, a tiling exhibit. Kids mm -hmm. can match and learn all about the patterns. There's triangles and squares. And you can watch them make a cool pattern of flooring, um, which is something we've all seen in really cool buildings, uh, especially with marble or tile. They, you see the cool patterns. Well, kids can learn um, different shapes and patterns. And That's lovely. It's a fun learning exhibit. And then <clears throat> there's uh, kids can make a new roof. Mm -hmm. Uh, with a, yeah, W-R-O-O-F for the dog house, a new roof. That's pretty cute. That's <laughs> one of my favorites. Um, and then uh, what else can they do? There's a painting exhibit, but it's um, uh, a technological exhibit. So the, uh, there's a sensor in the paintbrush, and you can make the paint, uh, the wall turn up different colors without getting messy, which is a lot of fun for mm -hmm. parents. Because um, kids always want to help paint the room but sometimes they might not be the best of help and their intentions might be good. But um, at, in the Building Buddies exhibit, they can, um, they can paint as much as they want. They can put up curtains. They can do some landscaping. There's some grass. There's some sidewalk making. And, and then um, a big part of the uh, exhibit is bricklaying. So they can build a house. They can um, build a chimney with the bricks. And then there's a climbing structure in there, too, where they can send the bricks throughout the climbing structure. They can pull a rope, and then the bricks go up to the top of the climbing structure. And then the kids could throw the bricks down through a little tube into uh, one of their wheel wheelbarrows below the climbing structure. So that sounds there's amazing. tubes that they can crawl through. Um, did I leave any of them out? No, I think you got all of them. Did I get all of them? Good. Yeah. So um, there's a lot for kids to learn, to, to get an idea of what um, home construction can look like, and uh, it's very hands-on. The dinosaurs were very cool to look at, um, but there wasn't a lot of hands-on activity besides the dino dig and that kind of stuff. But this one is all hands-on. Um, kids um, can just spend all day playing in there. Actually, we took um, our nephew over the weekend, and he loved it. He loved it so much. He didn't want to visit any other exhibit. Um, my husband eventually had to take him up to the second floor because there's more to see, but he just loved it. Um, he loved building with the bricks and the tiling. He just loved it. Yeah. Yay, good. Most, most young kids seem to really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely... The dinosaurs were more for the older kids and adults. The toddlers did not like the dinosaurs so much. <laughs> um, they can kind of be a little intimidating for that age group. So Building Buddies is more geared towards, I would say, 2 to 10 or 12. So it, it captures more of a breadth of age of children, and it's a lot of fun. Um, for all for kids of all ages. So all right. if you haven't been able to check that out yet, Building Buddies will be here until March 2018. So you have some time. It'll be here through the holidays. Um, you definitely got to come check it out. Um, Building Buddies is a lot of fun. All right. So that's awesome. And what else is coming up this fall? I feel like there's an event coming up this weekend. <sighs> there is. Um, our, this is uh, Motor Mania, Leonardo's Motor Mania. It's a big um, Saturday event for uh, Leonardo's. And it's a time for children. You know, they're in the car seat. 
um, traveling through Enid, and they get to see all those big cranes and trucks and fire trucks, police cars, um, all these big vehicles, ambulances um, from the back seat of their car, and they want to see them, they want to touch them, they want to be inside those vehicles. And this is a great opportunity for them to explore um, with the drivers of those vehicles. Um, they're able to get inside these vehicles and in a safe environment with these drivers um, and learn what it means to drive these vehicles mm. around. Um, uh, last year, I remember a lot of kids getting, uh, they love the ambulance because they, they uh, got the stretcher out and the kids loved getting in that thing and then they would push them into the ambulance and out. I, you know, their forearms must have been so sore after last year's motor mania because I saw that happening a lot. Um, so we'll have a florist van there, which is a lot of fun. Pioneer is bringing a big mascot oh, wow. um, to come play. Uh, the, the cranes will bring their bucket trucks. og and &E is coming. Um, it, Motor Mania is, is sponsored by Bruckner, so they'll be bringing out huge trucks for that. Um, lunch will be provided by Bruckner's as well, uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. Water is provided for folks too. Uh, admission is $9 per person, unless you're a member, then it's $5. So lunch is provided, water is provided, and $9 is usually our regular admission price into the museum. So folks are getting a, a big um, a, a big event for the same price as admission with lunch and all that included. I just wanted so. to clarify, so they can attend the event and go into the museum by paying $9. That's right. Um, if, if you buy your Motor Mania admission, it's good to all, for all day admission into the museum too. So if you want to check out the new Building Buddies exhibit while you're there for Motor Mania, you sure can. And check out the second floor, the new addition up there. Um, that's included all day uh, for with your admission. So. So, do you have anything for adults this fall? Yeah, so our big nightlife event is coming up um, on October 13th. Mm -hmm. So this October, there's a Friday the 13th, which yeah. we're really trying to uh, capitalize on um, and try to do a fun, spooky-themed adult event at the museum. And so nightlife, if you haven't heard about it, it's a 21 and over night at the museum. And um, what I try to do uh, when, I, when I plan these is to have a, a lecture component to the evening, as well as hands-on arts and science activities, just like what children have when they come to Leonardo's. So this event, um, it's a spooky kind of, we'll have Halloween music going on in the background, which we all love. And um, Tammy Wilson will be giving the lecture. She's co-author of the book, Ghost Lahoma. Oh, wow. Which is a lot of fun. And so she's done a lot of uh, walking tours and band tours throughout Enid, um, giving uh, great uh, ghost folklore tours throughout Enid. And uh, might even talk a, a little bit about the building where Leonardo's is, too. Oh, wow. So because Leonardo's, that building itself, is about, it's almost 110 years old. Do you think it's haunted? I, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. But um, I, at least I haven't had an experience. But it, when you're in a building that old, it's kind of fun to think about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, you can learn some of the history for that building if you come to nightlife that night. Um, Alton, as you know, was the original owner of the building. and. Um, Tammy will talk a little bit about him. So we'll have the segue out that night. We'll have different science um, uh, events going on and the bar will be open. We have a, a cash bar for folks. So bring your friends and a date and well, it'll just really be a fun night. That so. sounds like fun, an opportunity yeah. to play. Yeah, and so then for the kids, we have our fall festival mm -hmm. that comes up on October 20th, so uh, uh, a week after the nightlife. And fall festival, it's an opportunity for kids to run through Adventure Quest with their costumes on and just reenact or role play as a superhero or princess or, you know, anything. Uh, last year, my favorite two costumes, and it was two toddlers holding hands, was a pineapple and pumpkin. Oh, this is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so they went through Adventure Quest, and there will be arts and crafts and games, and lunch will also be provided that day. So um, <clears throat> October 20th, the kids, Enid Public School kids will be out on fall break. So it's a great time. Uh, the morning, it's usually... Um, 
it's just the perfect weather for a fall festival. It's a great time to get out and enjoy that. So it's like the Halloween before Halloween. Exactly. It's just they can they'll uh, make a craft with a pumpkin, and it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. So, but, and then day after that, October twenty first is our tenth annual Princess Ball. So. For folks who haven't experienced Princess Ball, it's really a magical evening. It's, it's meant for dads and daughters, uncles and nieces and grandfathers and their grandkids. It's a special night for bonding, really. You, you get that special evening where everybody dresses up, you have a fun night, there's dancing, there's Disney princesses um, all around, and they're, this year we're doing a full meal for folks, and uh, there will be cupcakes at every table, and goodie bags for the princesses to take home. So it really is it a very like magical a night. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. So. We got Princess Ball, and um, lastly, I know we want to talk a little bit about volunteers and docent program. The volunteer docent program, so we're looking for volunteers mm -hmm. to volunteer about eight hours a month. Um, that can be broken up into like four shifts of two hours each um, for about a year, the commitment, and this is to assist with the exhibits. Um, you'll receive training, uh, about 10 hours of training, I believe to learn how, about the different exhibits and to work with the animals if that's what you're interested in. And we're definitely looking for volunteers as soon as possible. Um, it'll really help us um, with our museum. Um, the more people we have on the floor, um, the more support our guests have and the better experience they have. So if you're interested, please let us know. You're welcome to visit leonardos.org for more information. Yeah, or email. At volunteers at leonardos.org. Volunteer at Leonardo's Sorry. right? Yeah. I don't think there's an S. There's no S. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just making sure. Um, so we have a lot of fall events going on at Leonardo's, and I just want to invite everyone to come out this Saturday, and you can learn all about the other events too. Um, but this Saturday, again, is Leonardo's Motor Mania. It's from 10 to noon. I don't know if I mentioned the time earlier, but. Um, It'll be a lot of fun. And then right at noon, uh, I forgot to mention this too, the parade, the trucks will all come out of the parking lot and parade out and honk their horns and sirens. So if you have a, uh, a sensitive uh, hearing person, bring your headphones, because um, they do like to, uh, the fire trucks like to make some noise. And uh, it's just a lot of fun um, as, as you see all the trucks go out. So this Saturday, come to Leonardo's from 10 to noon. And we have a special events page on leonardos.org. If you go to that special events page, you'll learn all about these programs that we were talking about today, uh, when they are, the times, and everything. Uh, and you can also purchase tickets for Princess Ball there too, which is a new thing this year. So we're really glad that you uh, were able to watch us today. Yeah. If you have any more questions uh, uh, about Leonardo's or questions about programming, please go to leonardos.org. Thanks again. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tree Perkins with Youth and Family Services. We've got a lot of great programming and opportunities to serve your family at Youth and Family Services. Be sure and watch for us on Community Talk to learn about many of these great things that we can help you with. Community Talk. My name is Jennifer Kissling. I am the president of the board at Loaves and Fishes here in Enid and I am um, privileged today to get to visit with our assistant director Katie Long mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about some of the exciting things going on at Loaves and Fishes. This is just a fast-paced time of year for us and sure um, we've just come off the summer months which are the highest um, need-based months that we have and we're straight into Hunger Action Month. Mm -hmm. September is Hunger Action Month. That's why we're wearing the orange um, not just because I love OSU, <laughs> but also because it's Hunger Action Month. Right. Um, what are some of the things that we do to celebrate and, and inform the public about Hunger Action Month? So we celebrate Hunger Action Month to draw awareness of the one in seven Americans that are food insecure, meaning that they don't know where or when their next meal will come. On the local level, one in four children and two in five senior citizens in Garfield County suffer from food insecurity. 
Um, so we are taking this time to spread that information through um, social media campaigns by coming and talking today and um, by just creating some involvement in our community through the food drive and other events coming up. So. Yeah, one of um, the ways that we really um, have fun on our Facebook page, and, and we try to have a lot of fun on our Facebook page. If you don't follow the Loaves and Fishes Facebook page, you totally should. But one of the things we've been doing is called Spoonies. Um, and Spoon Timber, um, it's, it's actually started by Feeding America, mm -hmm. the national organization against hunger. And you take a spoon, and to make your selfie, you dangle it on your nose, which is really hard to do with a plastic spoon, but um, put a, no a spoon on your nose. It doesn't have to be orange. These are just color coordinated for us. And um, take a selfie mm -hmm. and then tag um, Hunger Action Month. Uh -huh. And Spoon Timber. And then if you tag us, we'll probably share your selfie. Definitely. Absolutely. We love seeing new fresh faces. Mm -hmm. But you can go on our um, Facebook page right now and see all of the folks that we've already got to uh, Yep. hang a spoon off their nose <laughs> <laughs> but it does it, it's a, just a fun way of, of bringing attention mm -hmm. to a serious topic not only nationally but here in, in Enid and mm -hmm. um, like you said one in four kids I mean that's just incredible mm -hmm. and um, it's not just um, you know I don't know it's, it's the kids in class that mm -hmm. your kids are sitting next right. to or in church or your next door neighbor mm -hmm. and it's those people that you just you don't realize right. that we are living around people and amongst people who have um, a need. Right. And and it's such an easy need that we can all be a part of in trying to resolve and fix. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to our next right. huge event on Sunday, October the 1st, is our annual Citywide Food Drive. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. So uh, Citywide Food Drive is, this is, I believe, the 34th annual fall food drive. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, so it will involve volunteers from all over our community canvassing neighborhoods on October 1st, which is a Sunday. So we ask you to have your food out on your porch by noon on Sunday, and then our volunteers will start rolling through your neighborhoods uh, between one and four, and they will pick up anything that's bagged for, um, for donation. We're asking for some non-perishable items. We're looking for baby food and formula, canned fish, canned fruit, chunky soups, cereal, coffee, um, jelly and nuts and trail mix, salad dressings, and then some household hygiene items like shampoo and conditioner, soap, toilet paper, toothpaste, and feminine hygiene products. Um, so just if you leave those items out on your front porch or out by your mailbox, our volunteers will stop by, they'll pick them up, and then they'll return them to the pantry. Um, and our goal for this year is to bring in 21,000 pounds of food. So That's a lot of food. It is a big goal, but I think it's one that we'll make. And what's really impressive about that is, is it's a lot of volunteers that really come together mm -hmm. to get the work done. Mm -hmm. And it's a three-hour food drive. So in three hours, we're hoping to bring in that mm -hmm. much um, foods for food mm -hmm. and supplies right. for our hungry neighbors. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a mass um, volunteer effort. It is. And mm -hmm. are there still volunteer opportunities we available? We still have about 20 routes available. So if you're interested in doing a pickup route, if you want to give me a call at the pantry, I would love to get you signed up. We also have some spots in the pantry itself on the day of to help receive and sort food. It takes about 350 volunteers to make this project happen. Um, so we desperately need anybody that's willing to come and support this program. So when you say take a route, what exactly does that mean? So a route, um, we have divided the city of Enid up into 65 routes, so it's just 65 neighborhood chunks. And so it's just, you tell me that you wanna take a route and I get you signed up and I'll hand you a map that'll show you exactly which houses that you'll be picking up at. And you just drive through the neighborhood and you pick up any food. Some of our neighborhoods um, will get one of these yellow bags that um, just say the same thing that is on our sign. But if the neighborhood that you're picking up doesn't have bags, we encourage people to go ahead and put stuff out in regular grocery bags just out on their porch or by their mailbox for you to pick up. Um, so 
those are routes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And usually it takes at least two people to uh -huh. do it. And mm -hmm. I've done it several years, and it's it's really a fun thing to do with friends mm -hmm. or with a youth group right. or, or neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, you know, neighbors getting together doing something. But somebody to drive, uh -huh. a person or two to hop out, walk, and, mm -hmm. and, and bring the food back to the car. But it's really a fun way. It's a great way also for high school students and college students mm -hmm. to earn some community service yes. hours, which yes. we are in that fall semester when everybody has to do those. Mm -hmm. So it's a great opportunity to do that. Yeah. And it's fun, too. Mm -hmm. um, and then helping at the pantry mm -hmm. um, is going to be more the the what time frame is that? So helping at the pantry, we ask that folks get there at about 1230 just so we can go over and do some quick training with all of our volunteers. And then that would be from about 1230 through about five. Uh, when cars that have driven a pickup route show up, we swarm the car, unload, um, try to get them on their way back to their day as quickly as possible. And then while we're waiting on the next car, we'll do some quick rough sorting um, just to manage the chaos of that much food coming in in three hours. And with that much food coming in, there's a lot of sorting that goes on after the fact yes. as well. Uh -huh. So I know the pantry will be closed the week after yes. um, in order for us to sort all that food mm -hmm. and get the pantry back to normal before we start serving our clients again. But are there are opportunities there? Yes, if you're interested in coming in to help after the food drive, then we will um, have some sorting hours on Monday and Wednesday from nine to four. And then on Tuesday, it'll be 9 to 4. And then on Thursday, it'll be 11 to 6. 11 to 4. Let's go 11 to 4. That's if the right answer. If you want to put in the extra two yeah. hours, we'll let you. Right. Um, and so um, one more thing about the food drive is, mm -hmm. you know, it's really easy to put those, sack up all your groceries, go through the pantry, put those on the porch, and that's fun. But actually, money goes a lot further. Mm -hmm. So if you would like, you can donate money right. during the food drive as well. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. How do they do that? So if you would like to donate money, just take your cash or your checks made out to Loaves and Fishes, put them in an envelope. On the outside of the envelope, label it for food drive and tape that to your front door. Um, we ask that you do that you tape it to the door just so it's a little easier for our volunteers to find it. It doesn't accidentally blow off your porch or get lost in the shuffle somewhere. Um, if by chance your house is missed and your donation is still taped to your front door or left on your porch, if you'll call us at the pantry, um, we will send a volunteer out sometime in that following week to pick up your donation. And sometimes I've, I've helped in that, that check's been stuffed down mm -hmm. and within the food in mm -hmm. the sack. And um, that's kind of scary because sometimes the volunteers are just throwing all those sacks in the back end of their pickup mm -hmm. and it can easily fly out or get missed as we're hurriedly trying right. to go through all the thousands of pounds of food. So really keeping it separate, handing it to the volunteer that comes to your door, or taping it to the door and letting them find it there really is the safest way to make sure that we get that money. And that money is really really um, a, a, a necessary way for us to operate. We have figured out that it takes us $33 to fill a grocery cart. Mm -hmm. Families shop with us once every 30 days and um, they are able to leave with a grocery cart full of groceries and it costs us $33 to fill that cart. So if you keep that in mind, that's really a great baseline to know that if, if you've donated $33, you've helped a family from feed them for a month. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's just an excellent kind of a easy number it to is. remember it is. And, and really make a huge impact. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's October 1, mm -hmm. Sunday. Have mm -hmm. your, noon out, your food out by noon. Yep. Volunteers will come by about one. And then later in October, we get to celebrate our fifth birthday. Mm -hmm. um, on October the 23rd, Loaves and Fishes will have been opened officially for five years. It's been a tremendous five years, yes. and we've done so much work in those five years. I'm very proud of the organization and the work that we have done. And I know you've got like major stats mm -hmm. and statistics for us. So like how many people have we served in five years? We have served 14,281 individuals in 5,693 households. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. that is a lot of food. It is, it's a lot of food. Um, if you wanna hear about a lot of food, in the five years that we've been open, our warehouse has processed 2.8 million pounds of food to go into our community. And, and what's astounding about that, I, I mean, not just that number is astounding, but also is we have a very small staff. Mm -hmm. And so that is primarily done through volunteer mm -hmm. help. So 
even though the food drive is a really fun and um, exciting time for the community to get involved, we need volunteers every day that we're open. In fact, mm -hmm. it takes 25 volunteers roughly each mm -hmm. day to make sure we get our mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. And part of that is in the warehouse. So um, that's an excellent opportunity. Um, we're almost out of time. Is mm -hmm. there anything else that you want to talk about? Um, we have another event that's coming up in October that you uh, we'd love for you to sign up for uh, Vance Air Force Base is sponsoring a 5K that will benefit loaves and fishes. It's called the Toucan Trot on October 14th. You can visit our Facebook site, our um, page, and register, and all the proceeds will benefit loaves and fishes, and it's a great way to go out and spend a morning outside getting a little exercise. And it's going to be at Crossland Park. Yes. So it's a great course, mm -hmm. um, and it is the very first one that yes. they've put on, and so we're just really grateful and thankful that they cho have chosen Loaves and Fishes as mm -hmm. the benefactor for this race. It should be a lot of fun. Now, I know October 14th, um, we've already heard. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's OSU homecoming. It and we've also heard it's, you know, that other team is playing too. Um, oh, you. And, uh, but <laughs> oh, you. Uh, <laughs> but um, we expect it to be lots of fun. And mm -hmm. hopefully we both have really late kickoffs so we can all go down and enjoy the weather, exercise a little bit mm -hmm. for a great cause, and, and just get out to um, really encourage all of those young men and women mm -hmm. that are they're here um, in Enid for a short time mm -hmm. serving our country. So we've got a lot going on at Loaves and Fishes. Um, please contact us if you need help, if you have a friend that needs help, or if you'd like to volunteer. We'd love to see you at Loaves and Fishes. Thanks. I'm Cliff Reporter of the Booker T. Washington Community Center, located at 800 South 5th Street. Please come out and visit us at some of our programs, and please watch for us on Community Talk. Welcome back to Community Talk. I'm Julie Nelson, the Community Relations Director at Hospice Circle of Love. We are a not-for-profit organization that has been serving Enid for about 35 years and we care for terminally ill patients and their families in the home or nursing home. We provide spiritual, physical, and emotional support to help the patient live life to its fullest at the end of life. Today we want to tell you about an event that we have coming up, our fall book sale. And with me, I have one of our volunteers, Jovita Lang. Thank you for being here today. Well, you're welcome, Julie. I always enjoy coming. Good. And you have been very busy over the last several months sorting books for our sale that's yes. upcoming. Yes. You want to tell us a little bit about some of the treasures that people can find at our sale? Well, we always have treasures there. You have, may have to dig a little bit, but these are all in categories. All uh -huh. of our books are in categories, and we try to do it kind of by authors, too. So right. whenever you're looking for a certain author, you can find that. And so we have all different categories of books. Um, this year, it seemed like working this summer with the books, we have a lot of coffee table books, okay. I think, and they're just beautiful books. And, of course, all of our books are 50 cents for the paperback and a dollar for the hardback, so what a bargain. You could get a really nice yeah. coffee table book to decorate with. Exactly. For a dollar. Exactly. And uh, we've just had gobs of books. I just think more than normal. Um, I've enjoyed doing it. I've never before done the sorting of the books mm -hmm. as, a, you know, but in the summertime, um, one of the volunteers that was going to do that was gone to Colorado. So. Uh, I said, okay, I'll try to do that. So we uh, we had lots of fun doing it. There's a mile high of boxes, and so we sorted boxes and and then started sorting books. And every time we went, it seemed like there was more in there. So we oh, really yes. have a full house this year of books, really. And um, I mean, all different kinds. We've got westerns, lots of religious books, lots of children's books. One of my favorites is the recipe or the recipe books. Uh -huh. But um, uh, I mysteries. have mysteries. Yes, mysteries, uh, fiction, nonfiction, um, books on Oklahoma, and oh. we even have antique books. Nice. We found some antique books, and so we just made a special category for the antique books because a lot of people like to put those like on their coffee table and uh -huh. just decorating and one thing and another. So we've saved the nicer ones and uh, um, just a really good. Um, collection of all kinds of books. Um, our sale is going to be October 6th and 7th, mm -hmm. 
and it's going to be from 9 to 7. 9 to 7. On Friday. And then 9 to 5, five on Saturday. Uh -huh. Normally, I mean, I think sometimes we go like and have it the following week, but uh, we're going to try it that way, just have it a little bit later, mm -hmm. and that way people that get off work can come. We really have, um, it's going to be in our building that's right north of the office, which is one block west of St. Mary's. Yes. Lots of parking. We have lots of help, so we'll help you carry your books to the car, um, you know, if you need help, or um, um, we have sacks there. You mm -hmm. can bring your own bags or whatever, but we do have sacks for the customers if they want to. Um, one of them in sacks. We do have also like a sack of those uh, Harlequins. Yes, the little romance novels. Yes, and you can buy a whole sack, as many as you can get in for five dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, what a that's bargain a that is! Yeah, that's a very good deal. So a lot of people collect those. Yes, they do. Um, I didn't realize how many Harlequins were in this world. <laughs> yes, but there there's are a lot. lot. Yeah, there <laughs> is. And so also we're going to have refreshments. We're going to have cookies and brownies and and this is by donation. Uh -huh. So you don't a certain price is whatever you want to give. Uh, our customers are a lot of them are people that who have had hospice right. for their families and mm -hmm. so they're always so sweet and kind mm -hmm. and uh, um, nice to deal with and a lot of times you know we just say whatever if you want to give something fine but the refreshments go all over very well I think so too they really do and yeah. then also uh, I think you had mentioned before we have free coffee yes so you free coffee and, and free bookmarks and free bookmarks that's right when we load them out we give them a bookmark and sometimes <laughs> two or three if you know depends on how many people there are but right. um, I just noticed a lot of books this year so we're we're looking forward to it hoping for nice weather yes we'll just open our big door and and uh, most of the time that works well. Um, of course, we'll be there, rain or shine. <laughs> yes, we will. We will be there. And, and there are some other things in addition to books that we'll have at the sale. Let me see. The oh, puzzles. yes. We're, we've got puzzles. We've got VHS tapes. We've got DVD tapes. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got cassettes. Mm -hmm. We really CDs. got a lot of that stuff this year, a lot donated. So, and all of our books are donated. A lot of people come and get their fill of books and then they bring them back and, uh, yes. and start over again, you know, and mm -hmm. you'll have people with lists and they'll right. uh, go over their list to see if they've read that book. Mm -hmm. So the other day I saw in the paper where a lady had passed away and it said she wrote it she read a book every day for 50 years. Wow. And I'm like, uh, yeah, she could come to our book sale. <laughs> she would fit right in. Yeah, she, she would. She would fit right in. <laughs> so. You know, it's kind of neat how um, you may be able to find something you've been looking for a long time at our book mm -hmm. sale. I remember one lady told me one time, oh, I've been looking for this book for years. It was part of a series and mm -hmm. it, it wasn't in print anymore, but she found it at our book sale. You know, we have several series of books that we found that people have donated this time. They're very interesting and they're uh, well taken care of. And we sort through those books. So if it's a book that doesn't look very nice or it's dirty or something, we throw it away. Or we also um, have a different place where we t send books to like nursing homes mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we send them to recycle. Mm -hmm. And so there's always a place that or, will fit. Or to some of the consignment shops. Yes, yes. And so that works out really well. But we always have a good time. And uh, we have these like twice a year. Yes. We have it in October and in April, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to have it just once a year. But we've just gotten so many books and people are always asking. So we've started doing it twice a year, which works well. Yeah. It works very well. And. Um, you know, we talked about how you can find older books at the sale, but also I've noticed that you can find books that are very new as well. Yes. Something that's just been out, someone might read it, they're done, they bring it to the book sale, and instead of paying $25 for it at the yes. bookstore, you can get it for a dollar at our sale. Exactly, exactly. And I think since Ina doesn't have a bookstore anymore, it makes it even better. Yeah. You know, a lot of people order those. Uh, one of my friends said, well, they didn't think the book sale would last much longer because people are going to read it on their little um, oh, electronic, electronic stuff. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, if you've ever sorted books down there, you, it's going <laughs> to last a while. It's <laughs> yes. going to last a while. Yeah, it is. And you mentioned that the books are a dollar and fifty cents, mm -hmm. and we do sell several thousand of them. 
and um, that money goes to care for our patients that don't have a hospice benefit for Medicare or insurance. So it really helps people. That really out. works out well, especially if it's a younger person and mm -hmm. they've, they've been ill and they're struggling. Um, it's just a wonderful thing what hospice does. And I've just been hearing so many good things about I have a little hospice sign on my car mm -hmm. and on the outside, and people will see that and say, you know, they'll bring up a conversation oh, my mother, my father, my grandparent, or something mm -hmm. had hospice, and how wonderful they were, and how much they appreciated it. And I think one of the most frequent comments is I hear is, I wish we would have gotten them sooner. Right. You know, and uh, so you, you know, you can be dismissed from hospice if you're, mm -hmm. uh, you get better, you can be dismissed. My husband was dismissed from hospice. He'd had it for a while and then he was dismissed. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's always an encouragement. But it's yeah. there. It's there in case you need them. And right. um, it's just such a wonderful thing. I'm so glad we have hospice. Mm -hmm. now and um, I think people just don't realize how much it helps it's that support that's there 24 mm -hmm. hours a day someone mm -hmm. you can call in the middle of the night someone who will come to your house and show you how to do this thing for your loved one yes. answer your questions um, help them be free of their pain help them alleviate some of their symptoms exactly exactly I think that's so important and and they do a really good job with that our nurses are just super I mean Everything I've ever worked with with hospice, everybody is so kind and, and sweet. They just are so nice. The nurses, the aides, the people in the office, everybody is just bends over backwards to be nice. And it's just a pleasure to be around them. You know, it really is. It's a pleasure to work with them. And um, my friend Jean uh, Sion that I work with, that I've been doing books with, I mean, we've had such a fun summer doing this. I know it's work, but uh, it's enjoyable work. So. You know you're doing something to help people. Yes, exactly. Which is very satisfying. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, so I just really encourage someone that hasn't been to the book sale to come check it out. They are sure to find something that they would like, as Absolutely. many thousands of books as we will have available. Absolutely. If it's not a book, it's a puzzle or a CD or a DVD or uh, something like that. I mean, we just. Um, um, we have people in wheelchairs that come, people mm -hmm. that come in walkers, mm -hmm. you know, and so we'll make space for you. Our mm -hmm. aisles are kind of narrow, but, but they're wide enough for a walker to go down. Um, so, and then we'll, we have plenty of sacks that we um, can use, that they can use. So, um, it's just, it's a pretty neat thing. It's yeah. a pretty neat thing. And if it isn't raining, of course, we always try to have tables set up outside as well, and that kind of alleviates some of the congestion inside, yes. and makes it easier for well, people Well, we have to big look. lines that line up very early, so yes. they're ready to um, they're ready to start looking, yes. and so they can look at those books outside, mm -hmm. which uh, there's, those are really nice. I mean, we, we usually put several different kinds out there, uh -huh. so they can uh, hunt several different kinds. But we have books on Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a lot of books on Oklahoma at this time. Oh, good. Um, they were very interesting. In fact, I've read more books this summer, I think, than, <laughs> because I've found keep some finding things very you interesting. <laughs> I try to stay away from the recipe books because that's my weakness, but I do like those. But boy, we have a lot of recipe books and uh, they're, they're pretty interesting. And, some antique recipe books too, oh, you know, which is neat. which is fun to look yeah. at, really fun to look at. And I know we have a lot of crochet books. Some people oh, really enjoy do. those. Craft, yes, mm -hmm. we do. I didn't mention craft, and we do have a lot of craft books. I'm trying to think of the um, mysteries. Um, you know, we have mysteries account or Fiction. westerns. Yes, and westerns. westerns. Mm -hmm. Now we um, used to throw away our. Uh, uh, Reader's Digest condensed books, mm -hmm. but I've, those have been selling, so I'm not sure if, uh, I think there's there's some kind of a craft that people make those oh. out of, and a craft out of the books. So we've just kept those because we sold those. The last time we had a book sale, we sold them all. Mm -hmm. So uh, evidently, there you know, people do crafts with books too. Yeah, but, um, there are a lot of things you can do. Our whole program is just, um, I think it's ideal. I just, I've been a hospice volunteer for many years and and it's been very rewarding for me. It really is when you you help somebody else and you know you're helping somebody else, it's, um, it's just a very rewarding thing. 
And but we really, I guess we can always look for, you know, more volunteers. Sure, of or, course, always. So and they, we really appreciate you and, and the other volunteers and everything that they do. And um, I want to mention one more time the dates and times of our book sale. It's going to be October 6th from 9 to 7 and October 7th from 9 to 5 at Hospice Circle of Love at 314 South 3rd. And you can find more information on our website at hospicecircleoflove.com. We also have information on there about hospice care and bereavement as well. And uh, you can always call our office for information and that number is 234-CARE. Thanks for watching. Gore with Autry Technology Center, coordinator for business and industry services. If you're interested in a class, flip through our catalog and see if we have anything to offer. Otherwise, we can do customized training as well. Feel free to contact us at Autry Technology Center and ask for Ashley Gore. Watch for us on Community Talk.